I'm off right now to the Ministry of Transportation to get my paperwork sorted out for the new car. They were closed all weekend. Well, they were open Saturday morning, but I wasn't the owner of a new car then. Ooh, nice and warm today. Beauty. So I'm home now. Got the extension cord out and the vacuum. The shop vac. I found some water. Right in here. <laughs> There's a sensor in there for yaw. And uh, it's sitting in water. I wonder why it doesn't work. I'm going to have to get it out of there and uh, get a new sensor. Surprise, surprise. In my vacuuming of this water under the passenger seat, I've got in a five gallon bucket at least two gallons of water and there's still more. I can't believe how much water there is. That is crazy. All that so far has come from there. Wow. There's the second vacuuming of the spot under the passenger seat. There's still some water in here that keeps coming back. So I'm gonna let it sit for a bit now, accumulate, and then I'll vacuum it again. I've taken up the yaw sensor. Look at that. That hasn't been wet long, has it? Jeez. So, who knows how long that's been like that, I would imagine years with the build up like that. <sighs> I'm gonna have to source one of these and try and dry this out. I think I can put a fan in here tonight and just keep blowing the, the air around. So this is my yaw sensor. I just took it apart. It's done. I thought, oh, maybe it's dry inside. Maybe it's not. I don't know if you can see the water spots there. There they are. Better there. So, I've got to get a new one of these. It doesn't even smell right this thick. Fun. So I'm out with the Volvo. I'm really liking this car. It's, uh, it's really nice. It's comfy, it's bigger, it's wider, I sit up higher, it feels like I'm sitting down pretty low, but I can adjust that with my seat, but I kind of like being down low, I don't know, I'll figure it out. The brakes are a little creaky, yeah. The car sat for a year. So, to be expected. Okay, off I go to the shop. I've got the trailer. I'm gonna drop off at the shop. So a lady on a bike with a little dog in her backpack. Huh. I'm gonna drop off the trailer there and then head back home. Heidi needs the car tonight, I want to vacuum out the rest of the water out of the Volvo uh, before she either takes that or takes this. But I gotta get to the shop get the rid of this now.
additional $112,000. This isn't the kind of family that has a, a, an extra $100,000 just lying around. BC Premier Christy Clark says slowing or stopping price growth is the goal of this new tax in order to help first-time buyers. Some economists predict at least some of the offshore money that was flowing to Vancouver could end up in Toronto, adding fuel to that city's booming market. Greg Rasmussen, CBC News, Vancouver. Canada's prison watchdog says federal prisons are withholding information from families of inmates who died. A report from the Office of the Correctional Investigator also says prison staff are often callous. It cites the case of a family member who went to see the body of a loved one and was informed the inmates had already been cremated. The government is changing how judges are appointed to the Supreme Court. The CBC's Katie Simpson has the details. This is part of an overwhelming overhaul of the way that Supreme Court justices are selected in this country. Justin Trudeau wants the process to be less elitist as well. They're looking for candidates that are more diverse, represent the country that they will actually be representing themselves. And so Kim Campbell, the former progressive conservative uh, prime minister of Canada, she will be heading up this panel, which is very diverse. There are representatives um, from different parts of the country as well as different communities, like the LGBT community is involved. So once those uh, recommendations are made, it'll be off the prime minister's desk. There'll be some consultation, and they hope to have someone selected at least sometime this fall. That's Katie Simpson in Ottawa. U.S. President Barack Obama says Republicans should do more to denounce their party's nominee. Donald Trump is being criticized for comments against the Muslim parents of a fallen American soldier. I think the Republican nominee is unfit uh, to serve as president. Uh, I said so last week, and he keeps on proving it. The fact that he doesn't appear to have basic knowledge around critical issues in Europe, in the Middle East, in Asia, means that he's woefully unprepared to do this job. Trump ally, New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, said today Trump's criticisms of the Khan family are inappropriate. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is awarding about $20 million to 40 states and territories to help fight the Zika virus. It follows travel warnings to pregnant women to stay away from an area of Miami, Florida. There are 14 infections in one neighborhood, likely caused by local mosquitoes. Well, Zika has kept many athletes away from the Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro. The Games are about to begin, even though everything isn't quite ready. The CBC's David Common is in Rio with an update. We're still watching them build walls, and last night they were paving the road into the golf course. Uh, so it is very last minute. There's a media accommodation building right across the street from where I'm staying, and it's not done, and it's clear that it's not going to be done. And Although the opening ceremonies aren't until Friday, we actually know that competition begins tomorrow. There's more sports than they have room for during just the Olympic period. So we're going to see soccer. Uh, we're going to see women's soccer. We're going to see that starting up tomorrow. It's going to be happening in Sao Paulo uh, because the soccer matches are being played right across the country. That's the CBC's David Common in Rio. And that's the latest this hour from CBC News. We also broadcast live and podcast at our website, cbcnews.ca. I'm Karen Howell. And now for the weather forecast for the London area this evening, partly. So I've got three gallons of water out of this. Volvo. I'm going to leave it open overnight with a fan in it and uh, hopefully dry it up a bit or dry it up a lot anyway. So that's quite the uh, quite the amount of water just in a in a car under the floorboards too. Dry back here. The front seat's still wet. So. Oh. Got a little bit of more cleaning to do on this. I'm going to take the, this with me tomorrow morning. Really liking it. I was thinking, while I've got the car here and I've vacuumed out all the water underneath, 
why don't I take off that side piece and see if there's any water down there. Because this foam, it's pretty thick, you know. It's soaked under there. So I'm going to take the carpet out. I've removed this piece of trim, this piece of trim, that piece of trim. And I now have to undo this bolt and that bolt. I should be able to pull the carpet that way. And that will be that and I can get it out. I don't know how I'm going to wash this thing. Uh, I'm going to start with the hose. I already started vacuuming. There's the carpet. I'm glad I got it out. Then I can get that other coffee stain. But uh, what a mess. This thing is oh, nasty. It's heavy. It's full of water. It's about 15 pounds. Easy. Put this. Oh, the water's pouring out of it. Gonna have more water in it before it's done. You have to wash it. Coffee! Yay! Look at that. <sighs> well, that's the floor mat. It's dripping onto the garage floor. I have my ceiling fan, which is really a floor fan, just connected to the ceiling, blowing on it. That's where I'm gonna leave it. I'll have to stay there for the next couple of days to dry out. It's not gonna dry out out here. It's too humid. And there's always a good chance of rain this time of year. Okay, time to put stuff away. Thanks for watching. Look what I found. More water. I just went out for a little drive and I've got a, well, probably an inch of water under the floor there. Thank you much. A little less than an inch, but you can still hear it sloshing around when I turn and accelerate and stuff. So, I gotta vacuum that out when I get home. I thought I was done, but. I'm not.